Uh, hi everyone, and uh, I'm just here again to tell you, we went to Missouri Town, that was awesome, um, and I also want to say, please give us a comment on where to go next, and we try to get to it, me and Tracy, and if we couldn't do it, it's all because um, it's too far out of the way or something. But eventually we will get to it. But um, put a comment down and plus put a like button. And if you haven't described yet, hit that subscribe button. Um, let us know your feedback. Okay? Um, but please like this video and um, try, try to put a comment down you know uh, it don't cost none to subscribe and it don't cost none to like or anything but put that put the comments down and let us know you know um, if you want to see more of it and stuff and uh, without further ado Let's get into the video, okay? So, you guys watch, and I hope you like. Uh, and Tracy ain't here because she's at home, you know. But, um, she, she, she does do my, do videos with me now. So, hopefully, you guys keep commenting and, Keep liking and uh, we do more stuff. Okay? Chat at you all later. Bye. Hello, everyone. Me and Tracy's here again at uh, Missouri Town. Yeah, we're about ready to go into it right now. But first, we're going to do a little bit something silly here. Uh oh, what? <laughs> oh no, you're not. Yeah. You gonna be the girl? I'm gonna be the guy. You be the girl, and I'll be the guy. Why? You can look at it the other way. I see, there's Tracy. <laughs> cool. Sweet. <laughs> I still think you should be the girl. Come on, take your mask off. There you go, that's better. <laughs> you gonna be the girl? Now that's cute. Look at that. That's adorable. <laughs> Okay, you can be the man now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Missouri Town. See, there's Tracy. Don't say, I make a beautiful man? Say hi, Tracy. <laughs> now this is Missouri Town. Got a little walk, but it'll do. I need to lose some weight anyway. When I get back down to size 13 or 32 size jeans. <laughs> I got a long way to go. It's all because we're not in the sun yet. Look at that mansion over there. <laughs> really? There's an old barn there. 
Missouri town. Here we go. It's been a long time since I've been out here. I think they added a little bit more since the last time I was out here. You sort of like show creek. It kind of seems like that's what this is like. But there's a lot more to get Yeah, buddy. By the way, Missouri Town is in Lake Chacom at Lake Chacomo's Lake. They have signs how to get here. All you have to do is come out and take a look. But right now we're just filming this and the fort will go. I can fill those rocks right underneath me. Ouch. These ain't the right shoes for this. <laughs> These are more like house shoes, just about. But I want to be comfortable. You think? General something. It's probably like a sort of like a store pole. which he says he sells on this sign right here on the end of this box, which he says he sells for 60 cents a gallon, but I ain't never seen any of it. He, uh, he gets his whiskey from the distillery, and then we don't see him until sometime late Tuesday. And in the meantime, him and his friends all seem to make it disappear. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So I ain't had a taste in so long, I don't even remember what it tastes like. <laughs> all right, uh, unsociable of you. Well, I guess we better come here when he's here so we don't miss out on the whiskey. Oh, no, man. Well, make friends with him, I tell you. That's about the only way you're going to see him. Maybe you better find out where that distillery's at. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah. You folks been here before? I have. She, she I have. Oh, well, we're but, glad to have you, certainly. But, but it's uh, been a long time since I've been here, though. Well, we started in business back in 1965. That's when they first opened it up to visitors, and that was at that point we had the the tavern and the settler's cabin was only two. It was uh, I was here when it didn't cost nothing and just yeah, walk that's in. Been a long time ago. Yeah. 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 But, uh, no, we, uh, unfortunately, generally we, in the past, let people come on in and, and browse and even sell stuff out of here. But with this COVID thing, they won't let us do that. So we just uh, talk to folks at the doorway and, and try to stay far enough apart. We don't uh, give each other. Whatever. Yeah. Personally, I uh, I can't get along with mass too well. I got a breathing problem, so I just stay far enough away that hopefully. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. You'll be fine. No worries. What's about it. what's your what's your name again? Oh, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just was wondering for the record. Yeah, I. Uh, At YouTube. <laughs> I've been here working here off and on the uh, last three or you know, four or five years, but I retired in, in 2016 after 17 years being blacksmith. Yeah. And then I went on to. Just helping out in different places and more for the most part watching the store here. Cool. Been a good, good place to be. A lot of fun. Nice people. Wow. I didn't see that. So what kind of war club is that? You going to do some scalping? What? What kind of war club is that? 
Looks like a Tommy hawk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a stand for my phone. For my phone. So this is, this is a phone and you got the gadget right here. And that's for my YouTube. YouTube. In other words, uh, it's a uh, web channel. You, you do realize that you're in 1855, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're in the wrong time. Yeah, I know. I ain't never heard of none of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, tell you the truth, I don't do them in the, in the prison night either. <laughs> I, don't do, uh, I don't do them on a cell phone. I don't do computers. Uh, I'm blissfully happy. Cool. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Out of touch, but blissfully happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the only way to be is happy. Well, used to be out of mischief otherwise. Yeah, tell you the truth, I, I will. I understand you can get into all kinds of mischief with them, them, them electronic gadgets. Oh, yeah, if you don't watch what you're doing, yep. Definitely. Does all the time, yeah. He always gets himself in trouble. Yeah. Well, no. I, you know, on the other hand, I, I've gotten in trouble on many occasions myself. I mean, it needs to be important all week. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to be honorary too, you know. Well, a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. yeah I, uh, when I was younger, before I had a metal plate in my neck, I, you know, things long. got dull. We just started to brawl. Yeah. Wow. Pretty decent. Oh, well, got, some, got some working tools up there. Oh, yeah, that was stuff made at the uh, blacksmith shop. There was a, a time when I was young, one time I was out hunting and uh, I was walking down this trail along this kind of crescent shaped hilltop. Uh -huh. And I had got clear down to the end and back. I was looking for a deer or bear or something, you know, put in the kettle. Yeah. And uh, Got clear down to the end and back, and I didn't see a thing. And I thought, well, by golly, it's just such a pretty morning. I think I'll just go down again and back. And so I started on down the trail, and I got about halfway and come around the bend, and there was a black bear. And it was going the same direction I was. Oh, wow. I don't know if you realize it or not, but the south end of a northbound black bear is a particularly good bird. Yeah. So I decided what I was going to do was whistle at him, see if I could get him to turn around and look at me. Well, I, I finally got a whistle out. I was a little bit uh, dry in the mouth at the moment. Uh, kind of just a tad nervous, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, I, I finally got a whistle out. He didn't really stop and turn around. He just kind of glanced over his shoulder at me. So the only option I had was to try to take him in the eye. Oh, I man. Maybe I could, I could plug him in the eye and knock him down. Well, unfortunately, I must have pulled the shot just, just a tad because later on they found a strip of bear hide and hair laying there on the road. Uh -huh. trail about four or five inches long i just grazed him well of course he didn't like that much and i was standing there with my trusty uh percussion got all unloaded you know now. yeah well he turned around then which is which i was wish he'd done in the first place and anyway he got to popping his jaws and snarling a bit and he decided to come right at me well there i was with an empty gun and i grabbed my my knife in one hand and my tomahawk in the other, and <coughs> we tore into each other like that. And there we was, a slashing and a gashing and a gnashing and a chawing and just a clawing and a grappling. It was a terrible tussle. Well, we went on for quite a while there, and yeah, finally come to an end. He, uh, he hit me, of course. And what you see before you now is nothing but a pigment of your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Cool. Cool story. I like that story. Yeah, I do too. Well, I'm full of hot air, folks. I'm not going to worry. in the first place. Oh. Uh, well, nice talking to you. We're going to finish looking at the other buildings. Well, that's just fine. You just go ahead and enjoy yourselves and the very best to you and yours. All righty. Yes, indeed. Have a good one. Have a happy holiday. All right. Oh, that was. That was wonderful. Listen to old stories like that. And what she said, it was made up, but it sounded good. <laughs> this is a nice looking house. Do I move in and down here? I don't, I don't know if we can go into it or not. But... I can try. They're open, aren't they? I don't know. 
We go over here on this other side here. Looks like there's looks like there's a sidewalk over here. This has been a well. Supposed to be a well. Ah, no. It's all dried up. I would go there, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it was. In my mind, it was wrong. There's an outhouse. Oh, these are restrooms. Oh, employees only. Cool. It's probably for employees only too. But nice house though. Little barn there. Can't see in there. Oh, they got Christmas decorations up. Let's go on. There's restrooms there. You think? Okay. No, they're not locked. There's some goats. Bah! Bah! <laughs> Let's go over here to the little house over here, the white one. Let's go to the white one first. What you looking for? Oh, chicken? I'll tell you, chase after you. <laughs> I tell you, they're mean. They can be. If they think you're they're in danger, they chase you. That's just a little kitchen area. I imagine over there on the other side is a bedroom. Yeah, I see a bed over there. Okay. Yeah, I can't hardly see, but that's a bedroom over there. You can see through there? Yeah. Right up to it if you get right up to it. Oh, okay. I can see. Yeah. See it? Yeah. Nice little bed. This way. That way. That way. Okay. There's a flag. Another honor critter in there. See? See? See?
Hello. When's the dinner? Well, I'm cleaning up after. <laughs> if you want any more, I'll put some more wood on the fire, get it going again, but you got to get the chicken ready. Okay. <laughs> I saw one out there. You want me to go get it? Sure, whichever one. I'll tell you the black and white speckled ones, they're, they're kind of scrawny. They're not very mean. Okay. But the buff coaching is a really good one, so don't get hurt. Okay. <laughs> so how are your ladies doing today? We're doing well. Cool. Oh, and also if you want eggs, don't get any of the brown eggs. Oh, I don't like eggs. Okay. Well, I then do. You, then the brown lady is okay for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're doing well. Have you been here before? Uh, this is my second time. Oh, okay. I, I came in uh, around when it very first started. Uh, oh. The town. So it's been a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then you probably don't remember. This is our oldest building in the village. No. <laughs> this is the this is the tavern. Well, it's now the tavern. It was originally built 1822. It was used as a family home and a fur trading post because it was right on the edge of Indian Territory. Yeah. It was in Barrie, Missouri, which is now North Kansas City. Yeah. Um, then in 1839, Judge Thomas Chavez purchased it. His portrait is hanging over the mantle in there. He turned it into a tavern because there were three stagecoaches going by every week. So people needed a place to sleep. They needed a place to eat. So he yeah. built on the... Uh, two bedrooms upstairs, women and children on one side, men in the other side, and he nope. built on the kitchen. And uh, so it ran as a tavern until around 1910, 1920, right around in that area, when the trains took over and, and they didn't need, um, they didn't really do the stagecoaches anymore. It was also a mail stop. So if you look at the rooms upstairs, you will notice that the men's side is not finished and the women's side is. That is only so that you can see the simplicity of how it was built. Cool. One of our younger buildings is the settler's cabin right down the hill. It was built in 1960 by Samuel Luttrell for his new, huh? 1860. 1860. <laughs> 1860. It's all 1800s here. <laughs> Um, so it was 1860 and by Samuel Luttrell for his new bride, Armilda Dalton. Wow. If you ever need a little girl's name, Armilda, you can't go wrong. Or, I mean, until she grows up enough to realize and hate you for it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she was quite a character. She was a real character. She, um, with her little, you know, clay pipe and all of that. But she told Samuel, she said, I am not going to marry you until my cabin is all ready to, to move into. So he didn't stop at the one-room cabin, as most men would. He also built on a bedroom, and he built on the loft for the children to sleep in. Hmm. So it was fully a place that they could actually move into when they got married. Wow. So, But that one was located in Independence. Uh, 39th Street and Lee Summit Road. Yeah, I know where that's at. Yeah. You must have really yeah. wanted to marry her. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I know where that <laughs> Well, she was quite a character. She probably told him she was he was going to. So, you know, he better he better get his act together and get that house built. Yeah, you yeah, know, we... my we, kind of woman. Very smart woman. We traveled, yes. we traveled a long ways. Yeah. We, we, came, we came from, what, Fort... Uh, Fort Osage. Oh, Fort Osage, yes. Yes, you did. Yeah, see the badges? Yeah. Uh, that does pretty interesting there, too. Yes, it is. It is. I love going. Um, they have a new gardener. His name is Chris. And uh, he's been there for a couple of years, a couple of summers. And so I love going out in the summertime to get to see the garden. Yeah. That's something I really enjoy. And we have some good old conversations. That, that, this is right outside the fort, ain't it? Uh-huh. This right outside the fort. Yeah. Yep. Seen it as I was walking into it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So he actually did some winter um, crop this year, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I haven't gone to see it since he... I had seen it before he put his winter crop in, but after he'd taken his summer crop out. So I haven't got to see it since then. Uh, yeah. Did you see any out there? It is... What? 
Maybe he didn't put any in. No, there was no crop after okay. when I was out there. Well, I'll tell you what, one of the, if you ever need a garden space for your next year, if you know, you know what, I want this spot for a garden next year and it's not a very good spot for a garden, get you some daikon radishes and plant those in the fall. There's another name for them and I won't say it because it's, I'll just say big butt radishes because they are big. They're big white radishes and they go deep into the ground and they basically will till up your ground. And if you leave them in in the spring and, and till them in, turn them in, then they also give nourishment to the ground. Wow. And so it's a, it's a good way to start a garden spot. Wow. Is daikon radishes. This they're, is known. they're also known as huge radishes. Yeah. Uh huh. And I purposely plant them because this time of year, most certainly we have snow and ice on the ground. Uh huh. But they will still have green tops that my sheep and goats will eat. Yeah. And they actually will eat the, the turnips and the radishes out of the ground. Wow. They'll they'll pull them up and eat them. Wow. But they are very tasty, also. Yeah, they are very tasty. For humans as well as animals. Yeah. Oh boy, learn something new every day. Exactly. I'm telling you. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish right. roaming around here. Well, we've got the blacksmith is here as well, and the where, where, where's, where, where's the saloon? There is no saloon. Saloon is oh. a bad word. <laughs> okay. Very okay. We're we're a tavern. Taverns, in fact. In later years, when taverns weren't so necessary yeah. anymore, saloons, because saloon does not have a, it has a negative connotation to the, to the word because it was a, you know, not a, not a great nice place. Yeah. It wasn't a family place yeah. that you would go to. And so eventually they changed their names and started calling themselves taverns so that they would sound nicer. They would sound more family in. Oh, okay. And that's why modern people don't understand. They think a tavern is a bar. Oh. Wow. We have no saloon girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, y'all have a nice day. Can we go up these stairs? Or... Yeah, we can go up. We can go up and see. Yeah, this is supposed to be the man's side here. See how it was like back then? It's, this is what it was like back then. Wow, there's a coffin in, oh, that's a bathtub. Huh? Right there, in between the two beds. Looks like a coffin. I <laughs> know, oh, that's what I was going to say, but it's a bathtub. Sweet. Looks like a little. Yeah. This is where the women stayed at. Well, they also got their own personal potty. So I was wondering, is that a potty or is that like something for them to wash their face? No, that's a potty there. That's something that to wash their face right there. Where the Picture is on top of the bowler. Yeah, but they ain't got a tub in here, do they? Nope. Well, you guys, they got the, they got the tub. They got the toilet. And they got the bathtub. See, it kind of evens out in a way. I want to take a look right here. Look at a different shot of this room here. Oh, a computer. Oh. Yeah, this way too. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, dear. I'll let you get Rick and sleep on it. How you doing? No, doing okay? Like, I, I was like a special.
Yeah. He's running, he's running. Oh, here comes the other one. Look, he's coming right up here. Hi, dear. What are you doing? How you doing? Huh? Hi. You want to pet him? It's a lemmy. I can't tell. Hi. No. Nope. Yeah. Oh, blacksmith. Working hard over there, huh? Yeah, I'm taking advantage of my natural light. Cool. Most of the day, it's kind of dark over here, and I can't sharpen my tools, so I do other stuff. Yeah. Now I got my light. Turn the light on. Cool. Take advantage of it. And use this called a hot cut. It's pretty much just a tool for cutting hot iron. Yeah. Our apprentice was using it today, and I think that kind of go. I got a pretty new edge on it. Oh, well, it's something like an axe. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's um, there's a whole family of hammers called set hammers. Yeah. In blacksmithing, and this is one of them. And it's just a set hammer is one's got a hand, and you just strike it with another hand. And this one's about due for a little. Uh, trim work up around here too. Because you get it to where mushrooms over like that, it gets kind of hazardous when you strike it with a hammer, those pieces can fly off and, yeah. and uh, get you. So, let's see, what am I on this side now? So, That's cool. Yeah. That's the vice there. This file's just about ready to become a knife. Let's see if it has dough. This is a set. You can see the, you can see the metal shavings. Yeah. So this still got a little bit of life left in it. This is the second blacksmith shop I, I went to today. Is that up the fort? Okay. Yeah, they got a little blacksmith shop up there. Yeah, I, I worked in that one a couple of times. Uh, one of the staff up there is kind of a beginning blacksmith so he's coming out here and I'm showing a uh, few tricks of the trade oh yeah I filmed like about an hour and a half up there yeah just going through all the houses and going through that museum up there yeah we got a, a little more space down here yeah Wow, that's still smoking over there. Yep, that's, we had a fire going. My apprentice was here today. He was working on, uh, well, he was actually finishing up a little a little tool he was working on over here. Did this is a hot punch, and it's going to have a, a wooden handle in there, but that's mainly used for uh, punching holes in hot iron. Wow. And usually these, these types of tools have a wooden handle. That way, if you got pretty good sized chunk of iron there you don't want your hand right over it yeah trying to do that so uh yeah he just finished up on that today did a pretty good job he's been doing a few things it's a little cross peen hammer yeah and uh this is a needs a little more work on it this is a hot cut eventually it'll be ground off and sharpened for uh, cutting yeah through hot metal cool a little, a little hatchet needs to be do a little more grinding on them. Yeah. Okay. yeah just Pretty nice. Them. Nice Try work. Breaking it, breaking anything. Yeah. Yeah, but the sharp stuff is usually tend to I got let's see, there's a one of these, I think it's this one here. I have this one uh oh wait, there's this one. Yeah, this one we use. So you can use these. That and this one. And you can use that to cut. Oh, wood? Three from both sides. Uh, hot iron. Oh, okay. Cool. Hey, it does get a uh, cool, warm in a cool way. Yeah. I do get burned at least once a day. 
I tell you one thing, if it's colder out here, you'd be warm. Yeah, um, this wood forged and I got a wood stove there. Yeah. I get a fire going in. Cool. And it stays better. If it gets really cold and windy, the building's kind of drafty. Yeah. It doesn't warm up near as much. It's, e it's, it's either you got to keep busy or sit in front of the... Yeah. Stove well, there. I put my chair over there to take a break occasionally, sit by the stove, but the cat sometimes gets up in here and lays in my chair so I can't sit down. Oh no. <laughs> it's around somewhere. Actually, she hadn't been in today. I guess it was a little too noisy in here for her. Wow. Oh yeah. Well, thank you very much. All right. Well, thanks for coming out. Uh-huh. You have a good day, or a good evening, should I say. Wow. Cool. You want to go look at stuff now? Yeah, just like sitting here looking at Watch out for the little pebbles. Oh, great. I don't even think about you, that. You know what the little pebbles is from? Yes, I know what the pebbles are from. Okay. Just wipe them off in your church. Nope. Uh-uh. No. Well, why? It's a church. It's either a church or a school, but I, my bed is a church. Yes, I think it's a church. Because there is nothing for them to write on things like that. And it looks like the preacher stand right here. Church in early 1900s. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> we are gathered here today to learn the Word of God. Sorry, I forgot myself, people. And the Word is what? <laughs> love thy number or love thy neighbor. Amen. Said it, brother. <laughs> right now, where are we going next? So, was that this stuff not here? Yeah, there's a lot of buildings. That that white building was there when I. Because it's kind of like this is kind of like Shoal Creek. Here's the graveyard. Because the church is, anyways, by Shell Creek, there's a graveyard right outside of it. That's where they used to keep them. Now, was I right or was I right? Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. That's how they used to do it. There ain't no names on the stones. Oh well. You need to go potty? There's an outhouse. Oh, there you go. There's another outhouse right here. <laughs> the sheep just keeps on staring at us. Saying, <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's those people doing? And I think that's where they keep the sheep at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they keep something else in there. I think they keep cows in there or something. Because look all that poo poo. Yeah, you see the cat? That must be what he was talking about. Look at all those. Kiki. Kaka. Kiki. Kitty, 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 kitty. Kiki. What are you doing, baby? What are you doing, baby? 
He's friendly, kitty. He's like, okay, come out of here. <laughs> I showed my face, I'm done. What? Do you want to let me pet you? Do do do. This looks like a little sled. Doing all right. Good, good. So what are you doing here? I'm making up a coffee pot. Oh wow! Putting a spout right now, making sure I get it where it will seal up real good. Once I put rivets in, oh wow, good. yeah, perfect. And then I'll get the bottom cap on there eventually and. And a handle. Yeah, I heard you banging in here. Yeah, I was banging away at this spout, trying to get it to fit up. It's not too bad. I'm looking at the gap in here in the. Yeah. You look on the inside. You yeah. I see some daylight, but. Yeah. It should close up just fine. That's once it. I get get some rivets in it, and get some yeah. solder in it. It'll be just fine. Then we'll have to put a handle on it. Put a. Put a lid, make a lid for it. A couple of bales so we can hang cool. it. Cool. He, he also makes cups. Yep, make cups and uh, candle sconces. Oh, wow. That's, That's nice. Of my own. This is a yeah. spice kit that I made for my wife. This one comes out of the, the box itself comes out of a 1847 pattern book that I have a copy of. Wow. Inside is your nutmeg grater. And yeah. a cup for the nutmeg. All these boxes are individually designed for individual spices to go into. Wow. Nice. And that way they won't get mixed or blended when you're walking along carrying this from kitchen to kitchen. Boy, that is nice. My wife my wife does a lot of cooking and she does does that in different houses. And yeah. if you were to drop that or you know, move it too quickly, if the compartments were open it would blend your spices you'd have a rub yeah kitchen pepper as they called it in the yeah <laughs> so to prevent that from happening we'll put individual boxes in it cool and then of course we do small tools kitchen tools the funnels yeah uh, pretty nice for filling small bottles i have an alcohol lamp that i use for soldering and i have to fill that with alcohol and that, yeah that's my funnel of choice for that cool we make several different kind of things got a tinker's toolbox that i built oh wow, ain't that something no it's called a tinker's pig oh wow as you can see it's kind of shaped like a little pig yeah and the i lined the inside of this one so that the tools won't bang around oh that's it. sweet but this will be for if i had to go do a repair job on anything i could take this with me and i'd have my tools with me cool I'll, have, I'll be put a put some rivets in this little box on this end the cap just opens up and then it has a has a little wall to keep the rivets from spilling out when you open it wow and then the other end has just the square boxes for the soldering supplies Oh some wow! Flux. Yeah, I see a bottle of flux and some yeah. solder in there. So that's so, sweet. Yeah, it's, that's called a tinker's pig. The tinker was the repair man. He'd go around to repair people's tinware, brassware, copperware, yeah. pots and pans, retin it so that you know certain uh, like your tea kettle. You don't want to boil tea in in a kettle that's not yeah. tinned. If it's a copper pot, it it'll make you sick. On the other hand, if you're doing eggs, if you're whipping eggs into a meringue, there we you go. Want eggs copper. again. Eggs again. <laughs> you want you bare just copper. Don't like it. So. <laughs> I like and, eggs. Uh, if you're doing apple part. butter, you want bare copper for that. Cool. But there's certain things you want bare copper, and other things you don't. So, Tinsmith would have known that in the time period. 
yeah. accommodated. So everything in the window over here on this little table are things that I've made as well. Got a little selection of things. I've got an oven here that I built from a. This is the original from the time period. Mm, that's from that. Yeah. That was one that I found in an abandoned house. Wow. Um, this one here is one I re replaced it, rebuilt it. That's nice, yeah. yeah. That looks perfect. Yeah. So it sure does. So that's what it, we do. And it has a better design on it too. Well, it's it's the same design. It's the same. It's, uh, oh wow, really? The yeah, machine it's exactly is exactly the same. It just that one's okay. rusted out. Okay. Yeah, it's a, this one's just a little rusted, but. The, uh, the the tool that I have that does that design is 200 years old. Oh, wow. And so lucky to have it because there's not very many left. After the after the 1800s, when tinsmithing kind of went by the wayside, most of the old tooling, uh, some of the old anvils and things like that went for the ironmongers to go into the war efforts for World War I and World War II, etc. And yeah. those became torpedoes or battleships, airplanes, that kind of thing. So a lot of the old iron tools are gone. Yeah. The anvils we can still get. We can still buy those new. Yeah. Uh, if for, you know, if you're wealthy enough to afford them. Yeah. Most of us are. So That's so cool. We make do with what's been found or discovered in barns or salvaged out of old shops and that kind of thing. So That's sweet. Um but tools are getting really difficult to find. I'm mad. Anymore, because there's so many, uh, so many more people involved in tin smithing now. Yeah. That than were when I started seven years ago. Yeah. About eight years ago now that I started putting my tools together, and it was a lot easier to find tools then. Yeah. A little picky and choosy kind of. Yeah. Abilities. But now it's it's first come first served. Whatever comes up, you got to get it if you want it. Yeah. And so. But yep, just dabble around and and mess with the new designs of things. And That's sweet. Several different types of handles for different jobs, all different shapes and sizes. Wild wow, candle holders. Yep, got a got a feather. In there. It's got a feather. compartment in the handle for an extra candle in there. Oh wow! And this is the equivalent of a flashlight from the time period. You'd carry yeah. that when you went to work in the morning. When you could see on the way home from work, if it was a long day, you probably couldn't see very well, so you'd want some light. This, yeah. This would have a piece of cow's horn in the front instead of a piece of glass. Oh, you know, wow. A piece of cow's horn. If you boil a cow's horn, it gets soft. It's kind of like your fingernails, the way it's made. So then you can cut it, lay it out flat, and then shave off the, the rough side and then polish it, and it'll be almost like a, a pane of plastic. Yeah. And when that goes in, it won't break if you dropped it. So that's why they use that. Cool. And it's a lot cheaper to get than, than glass. It's a, most people butchered their own cattle, and they had that access to those things. But in the handle here is your extra candle. So if wow. You get, if you get caught out on a longer walk than you have candle in here, you, yeah. you're not stranded without any light. So. Until that candle runs out, and <laughs> you're SOL. <laughs> that's neat. That's all decent. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, so yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of just odd men stuff that I old canteen. Try to get a good selection and assortment of yeah what they would have had or been able to make. It's not by any means the larger part of what they made out of it. What what is that a mat? I mean a um, coal miner's uh, light. Um, no, this one here. Yeah. No, that's just a whale oil lamp for your table. Oh, okay. Uh, the intriguing part to me was they spent all that time making this really nice and pretty and then they stuck an ugly old wire in for a hinge and the original was like that so I wow. recreated it so that make a conversation piece oh wow mm -hmm. and that would have also had a piece of cow's horn in there because you could you could boil it in water and form it to different yeah. shapes cow's horn was used for making combs for uh -huh. women's hair spoons and cups and things like that it was prolifically used, uh, especially in the 16, 17. Wow. Wow. And uh, so, but this is a, made this whale oil lamp. And then I went down here to the lake. There ain't no whales left. <laughs> we got them all. Yeah. Uh. So now 
I don't have any light. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Are you following us, kitty cat? Yeah, old Franklin. She's uh, she's pretty fond of the visitors. She's our barn cat. There's that big barn right here. Yeah, he. She's a. She's a sweetie though. Blacksmith said that she comes over and visit with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She this, takes his chair. Yeah, that's yeah. what he told me. <laughs> she comes over here and she wants my lap. She gets up on the table and gets in my way. So oh no. Her, said her letters go to sleep in my lap for a little while but cool but yeah she's she's as sweet as can be wow he's well taken care of by himself oh yeah yeah you have a good day and you do the same it's good talking to you and Glad uh you guys were able to come out hope you don't work too hard oh no i'm about wrapping it up i hear you about to wrap it up i gotta start putting tools away so i can get the yeah get them loaded out yeah well you have a great day and you do the same and we're on our Take way. Care. Good talking to you. Good talking to you too. Nice. This way. There's still a house down here. Yeah, that house up there is not open. I don't think you'll be able to see much in there. That we keep the curtains pulled to keep the furniture from getting sunburned. Oh, okay. And uh, there's nobody up there, and so I did, if you don't want to walk all the way up there. Well, thanks for telling. Yeah. Because if we walk up there, we can't even see in the windows. And there ain't right, no. Yeah. That's why I warned you. All righty. Thanks. You're welcome. Well. Oh, that's going back. Uh, I said, John Wayne. You've been to Shell's Creek, right? Huh? You've been to Shell's Creek? Uh-uh. It's kind of like this. Maybe we visit that one of these. Uh, and watch out for the caca. But they don't have, uh, well, they have a, what is it, buffalo, but they're behind the gate, or behind the fence. But they don't have, like, lambs just, or what are the sheep running around? Yeah. That's kind of cool. Well, that's about it for Missouri Town. There's a couple of buildings over there we haven't seen yet, but we can see it on the way going out. Bah! Bah! Uh-oh. Oh, so great. <laughs> you just made a pee itself. <laughs> Good job. Well, that'd be nice for the YouTube people to see. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good job. They're saying, what the heck are they talking about? <laughs> We're going to take a break for right now. Get back with you soon. Well, we'd, we just tried to get a horse to come down, but he wouldn't come down. Where? <laughs> well, that one house, there ain't nobody there, so we can't look at that one. We can look at this one, but... But the other one, I don't think we need to look at it, too. shape up the wood and stuff like that. Wow. Bunk beds. Kind of strange. This is something like a wood, wood, wood smith. 
I think so. Yeah, they're starting to close it up now. It's starting to get about four o'clock or three o'clock. Did they say three o'clock or four o'clock? I think they closed at four. Four. Yeah. I'm not watching where I'm going. That's not good. I know I'm getting close. I wonder if I had your stuff on in. But yeah, off my shoes in your truck. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like a good idea. I don't want no cockle in my... Oh, it's cool. Now that's a school. Yeah, I got yeah, chalkboards desk. on the desk. Mm -hmm. Got a little, uh -huh. yeah, there's a little book underneath there. Cool. Looks like they took out the little oven thing out over there. That's sweet, little desk. I mean, little school. So, what do you guys think about it? I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you do, just put a thumbs up on it. Push the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we might be changing the on our channel name here before you know it. But right now, I'm just playing it by ear right now. So... If I do change it, it'd be with, uh, it'd be Rick and Tracy's Explorer. That's for a fact. Let's show you guys different places. Yeah. Places you can go, the family, or. Then, then if we have other things to explore or something like that, like abandoned buildings or something like that. I think we should jump from an airplane and let you guys watch that. Yeah. Skydiving, I love it. Yeah. But. Yeah, Tracy is going to be filming with me from now on. And. When, as she gets that slacker out of her, <laughs> that'll be a big, good thing. Oh, so sorry. See, she said she said she's still a slacker. Let's see here. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Good stretch of the legs. Uh, making me exercise when I'm not at work. <laughs> <laughs> Yepers. Now we're back at the beginning. <laughs> that was pretty cool though. I like it. <clears throat> hey, Tracy. Huh. Now, what do you think about it, Tracy? I like it. I think it's fun. Did you get any knowledge? Yes. It's actually learning a lot more. Cool. We should go a lot more places. We will go to a lot more places. No problem. No doubt about it. Anybody who likes history would love to do stuff like this. Yeah, we just want to... Let people know where they can go to, you know, learn about history and stuff like that. And this is Missouri town. There ain't no doubt about that. And uh, you all take care. And I hope you guys like what you see. And if you do, uh, push the like button and subscribe if you're a newcomer. i talk at you later. Say bye.
Bye.